Hi guys, it's April. And I have a review for you. So I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews with the non-spoiler section up front, followed by the spoiled filled dump afterwards. Now this one is a little bit of a tricky case because since this book is based off of a movie and a TV show and a comic book series, there will be spoilers scattered throughout even just talking about this book. Granted, some of these have been out for years and years and years, but I just wanted to let you know that if you haven't seen any of the Buffy franchise and you don't want spoilers, this is probably not the book review for you. But if you like Buffy, if you love Buffy, if you're interested in Buffy and you just want to know all the things, stick around. It's going to be a ride. Slayer by Kirsten White is the story of Nina and her twin sister Artemis who have grown up in the Watcher's Council, knowing all the things about werewolves and vampires and things that go bump in the night, and they both had to deal with a lot of the fallout from a lot of Buffy's decisions. At this point in time, magic is broken, and suddenly Nina finds herself a Slayer. And not just any Slayer, the last slayer. As she's starting to come into her power and understand everything that is going on, she also starts to uncover some demon fighting rings, demon drug rings, and just what is left of the Watcher's Council. Now you don't need to have read or watched any of the Buffy universe to jump right into this story. This story does contain a lot of info dump, but if you have been a fan of the Buffyverse for however long you have been, you will like a lot of the little nuggets that are dropped in this story. You're gonna see a little bit of Buffy, you're gonna see a a little bit of faith. You get to hear a little bit of everything else in between. And while this story doesn't hinge on you knowing those facts, as you continue reading, at least I found this for me, you almost want to know those facts. I have watched the movie and I have seen all the TV show. This was my life for a very long time. However, I haven't picked up any of the comics and since this storyline does play off of some of the things that happened in the comic series, I now want to go back and read so I can get a little bit of the behind the scenes of a lot of things that happened. Getting the Buffyverse from a completely different angle, I loved. I went into the story a little apprehensive because Buffy is near and dear to my heart. There is a lot of things that I really, really love about the universe. Granted, there's a lot of things that I just, I hate as well. But Kirsten White managed to grab a lot of things that I love about the Buffyverse and throw it in with a new cast of characters in a way that I need more guys. I really, really, truly enjoyed this book on a level that I didn't even expect, especially since it wasn't centered around a lot of my favorite characters. As the story went on, I started to get really nostalgic for the old Scooby game because you get the Scooby feel going on and then you still get a lot of the Buffy wit that I really liked about the TV show. So I think this book does it right. I am trying my hardest not to be completely fangirling because there are different levels and I know some people didn't really see eye to eye to this book and some people did. Obviously I was one of those people who did probably because I grew up reading fan fiction and this is just it's right up my alley, I'm not gonna lie. But I also like Kirsten White's writing. I liked her Anti Darken series, so I knew going into this I'd probably get along with her writing and she didn't disappoint me at all. All of this feels like it very much could be set in the Buffyverse and a lot of it has a lot of themes that come from the original TV show as well, which I think is why I liked it so much. So, if you are mildly interested in Buffy, if you are mildly interested in vampires, if you are mildly interested in just supernatural in general, I highly recommend this book. I might be biased. I will let that be known, but I'm just going to continue to say that I really like this book. But now, I have lots of words, and I don't even know where to start with these words, so I'm going to let you know that from this point on, I am probably going to be gushing about things in this book that will not probably will contain spoilers so if you don't want to be spoiled leave now and, and and come back because i need to talk to people about this book because there are so many things where do i start with this book i will probably start with a thing that i noted in the community that read this book first because it is something that i feel like i need to get some words out about because i noticed a lot of people were referencing this book in the fact that there was a lot of Buffy hate going on, which yes, there is, but you have to take in the perspective of who Nina is. Nina grew up as a watcher's child. Nina grew up 
as the daughter of the first watcher of Buffy who was subsequently killed. So yes, there is going to be a lot of Buffy hate because Buffy took away her dad. Buffy has completely destroyed the council. So I understand completely where she is coming from and I actually think that Kirsten White got that right. I liked seeing the evolution of Nina's feelings towards Buffy as Nina started to realize what it really means to be a slayer and how handling these situations the way that Buffy did was probably one of those split seconds decisions that in retrospect had to be made and they were hard to make and you can't just sit there and expect Buffy to make everything right for everybody. She's one girl. So we really like seeing that angle of the story play out. And I did mention in the first part of my review that you don't need to know a lot about the Buffyverse because Kirsten White info dumps in a way that I really, really appreciated, even though all of this is very vivid in my brain because I don't think you guys understand how obsessed with Buffy I was, am, always will be. Like I said, I didn't read the comics and this book takes place after a series of events in the comics that leads to magic not being a thing anymore, magic is broken. And then there was a lot of references to characters that I did not realize happened. I didn't know Giles was dead. So as things like that started popping up, I'm like, what? I can't, I can't, I can't deal <laughs> with not knowing these kind of things. I made the executive decision after Buffy ended and the comics started to become a thing that I didn't want to do it just because of where Buffy and Angel ended. I didn't see me liking where that storyline was possibly going to go. I may regret that decision just a little bit at this point because now there are things that I want to know. So I will probably be trying to track down all of these comics. So if you guys have any idea where I can get my hands on these things, let me know down below because I... I need, I need these in my life. And I love how Scooby Gang-esque Nina's friends started to be throughout this book. I really, that is one of the things that I really enjoyed about Buffy is just seeing how this friend group were the people that saved the world, even if they weren't all magical, even if they weren't the chosen one, even if they were the average Joe Schmo. I like that. I have always liked that concept. So to see that replayed here, I approve, I approve a lot. And of course, then you have Doug, who reminds me so much of Clem. And I don't know why Clem has always been one of those characters who stood out in my mind. I think it's just because he's so ridiculous. And just seeing Doug and the concept of demons like Doug and Clem and destroying those black and whites, demons bad, demons good, Finding the Grey, which the Buffy TV show had started to dig into quite a lot. Just seeing that and how all of that is opening up and the dynamic between the old way of being watchers and trying and struggling to become something that is still relevant today after everything that happens. I like seeing that because that is definitely something that played a lot in the original Buffy TV show is just how power hungry and manipulative the Watcher's Council was from Buffy's perspective and seeing it from Nina's and Artemis's perspective and what it had been and just growing up in that, what it would have been like. I like seeing that different angle and I'm very interested to see where this new Watcher's Council what direction it goes into because that is something that I know a lot of people have played with in fan fiction so I, I, I have some idea where I, I want it to go but we'll see how it actually ends up. This is probably a series that I will be picking up as soon as a new book comes out in the future because yes please. Oh my gosh I am such a fangirl <laughs> and I don't know if that will make my review something that is valid to a lot of people. But, you know, I'm going to be honest about who I am. I enjoyed this book because it just brought me a lot of joy. So I'm sticking to my guns. Love this book. Can't wait for more. Tell me down below if you have ever read this book and what your thoughts are. I don't even care if you trash it. Just let me know down below. Let me know if you are a Buffy fangirl or fanboy like my face because Yes, please. Anyways, I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.